Welcome to Electron Online, and here we're going to show you how we finally solved the mystery, the mystery of the electron and how electron structure and atoms are determined by the fact that electrons act more like waves than they act like particles. Now, one thing we have to understand is the concept of the interference of waves. So, from classical mechanics, if we think about one wave that looks like this, and let's say we have a second wave that looks like this, you can see right away that both waves have the same wavelength and the same frequency. Now, if you put those two waves together, what happens? You get nothing at all. They cancel each other out. Why is that? Because the two waves are 180 degrees out of phase. When this wave has a maximum in this direction, this one has a minimum in this direction. And when this one has a minimum here, this one has a maximum. So when you put the two together, you end up with simply a canceled out wave. In other words, the two cancel each other out and the wave ceases to exist. Now, the same will happen with electrons. So, we assume that if an electron zips around the nucleus, and the electron acts like a wave, that means it's going to go around the nucleus, that looks maybe like this. Then if it comes around and meets up with where it was in the beginning, because it doesn't take a very long time for an electron to go around the nucleus, and when it meets up again where the electron was before it went around the nucleus, it will actually interfere with itse itself, just like two waves interfere with each other right there. So the electron, the wave of the electron will actually interfere with itself. Now if it does, that means that if the, when the electron comes around, and let's say that the number of wavelengths that it took to go around once was not equal to an integer number of wavelengths. Let's say that the path around the nucleus was equal to three and a half wavelengths. So by the time it reaches back where it started, it will be 180 degrees out of phase. Because as you can see here, that if I take this wave right here and I move this wave over to the left, for example, 180 degrees, which is a half of wavelength, then the two waves would be back in phase. So let me show you that. If I take the bottom wave and I move it over a half a wavelength, then you would get something that looks like this, and then the two waves would be exactly in phase. And then the purple wave, with this wave, they would not cancel each other out. They would add to each other, and you would have what we call a standing wave pattern. So that's what happens to an electron. If an electron goes around the nucleus, and the path that it takes around nucleus is not equal to an even number of, or I should say an integer number of wavelengths, like three and a half or two and a quarter or something like that, then when it comes around there will be destructive interference and the electron will cease to exist. In other words, the electron simply cannot exist in a location, in an orbit around the nucleus, such that the path length of the orbit is not equal to an integer number of wavelengths, which means the path length, which is the 2 pi times the radius, which is the circumference of its orbit, must be equal to an energy number of wavelengths. In other words, 1 lambda, or 2 lambda, or 3 lambda, or 4 lambda, or so forth. When it does, that's where the electron can exist. So, when we take a look at a nucleus like this, we have a, a hydrogen atom with a nucleus that is a proton, and an electron that zips around it. We can then assume that in the inner, innermost energy level, where the path length is the shortest, because that's when the radius is the shortest, one path around the nucleus will be equal to exactly one wavelength. And in the second energy level, we can then assume that one trip around the nucleus for an electron, that path length will be equal to exactly two wavelengths. And then in the third energy level, we can assume that as the electron goes around the nucleus, one path length will be exact, exactly equal to three wavelengths. And if the electron does that, every time it comes around and does one complete rotation, it will be exactly in phase with itself and will, there will be no cancellation. So therefore, those are the only places where the electron can exist. Now we will see that in the future, that the electron can deviate a little bit from that, just temporarily, because the Heisenberg uncertainty principle allows for small deviations from the norm for very short periods of time. But that's only for very short periods of time Typically, the electron will only exist in the orbits when each orbit is exactly equal to an integer number of wavelengths. And that's why the orbits are structured around an atom the way they are, with electrons existing in exactly specific places around the nucleus, because like you can see, for example, if you take the third one here, you can see that it goes up, it goes down, that's one, up, down, that's two, up, 
then that's three and so forth. So when it goes around, it goes exactly around in three wavelengths and therefore it exists in that location. And that's why electrons cannot be found in between these, except for very, very short periods of time on a very temporary basis because of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And that's also why an electron will never spin into its nucleus and stay there because that's a, that's a position that the electron cannot exist in because when it goes there, it will simply cancel each other out. It can only exist at that particular location. Which also means that if an electron wants to go from one orbit to another orbit, that is what we would call a quantum jump. Since it cannot exist in between, it has to move very quickly within the uncertainty principle period, time period allotted or allowed by the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, it has to move very quickly from one orbit to another. And once it goes there, it will now be in a different energy state in such a way that one trip around nucleus will now be two wavelengths. And then if it gets additional energy boost to jump to the next level, then it'll have an energy state where one complete orbit around the nucleus will be equal to exactly three wavelengths. And notice that the energy of a photon which by Planck was determined to be h times the frequency, which is equal to h c divided by lambda, which means that the energy level of the first level is equal to h c times lambda 1, where lambda 1 is exactly equal to the circumference of the innermost energy level. And then if it jumps to a higher energy level, like say energy 2, that is equal to hc times divided by lambda 2, that means when it jumps to the next level, the energy contained within will be exactly equal to that existence like so, and so forth. So now notice that these are the energy state of the photons, which will be given off or absorbed when electrons jump back and forth between the orbits. So when an electron goes from there to there, it will be a new energy state. That energy state is defined by the addition or the subtraction from the energy that was either given off or absorbed by, from a photon so that the electrons can jump up and down between the energy levels. So again, the energy levels of the electrons are quantized and they can jump from one level to the other by absorbing or giving off an exact quantum of energy which is in the shape or the form of a photon. And that's what de determines and defines the atomic structure and the electron structure in atoms. And once we understand this, we can then go and develop that and understand why electrons and why atoms bond and share and do what they do in nature because the way they're structured like that in a quantum mechanic sense. So, there you go. The great mystery solved. Now we know why electrons exist, why atoms exist, why electrons cannot spiral inward and lose all their energy because they can only exist in those certain quantum states. And once we understood this, we now could solve that big mystery, why electrons don't spiral into the nucleus and disappear on us. And there you go. That's how we look at it.